The National Party's announcement of its social investment policy has provoked some critics to accuse it of privatising social welfare. I'm joined by National's finance spokesperson, Nicola Willis. So Hello. are you privatising social welfare or the provision of social services? Uh, no, and I found that quite a hysterical response from the Minister of Finance, actually. What we are talking about is a frustration that's widely held, which is that we do a lot of social spending in New Zealand. We're spending a billion dollars more a week uh, than we were when Labor came to office. And yet we still have what seem to be intractable social issues, whether it's the growing number of people in emergency housing, youths ram raiding shopping malls, soaring truancy rates. Social investment is about saying, how can we target interventions earlier that evidence and data tells us will work so that we're putting our dollars in the things today that will save human lives, grow human potential and yes, have some fiscal savings too. I mean it seems like that a lot of the focus has been on the social investment fund but yes. that's only really a small part of the overall policy. Yes. The main focus is as you say on trying to identify using data exactly where the money should be spent. That's right and we see social investment as a method that we can bring to bear on social policy and policy decision making across government, whether in education, whether in health, uh, whether uh, in social development. And we want to use those methods to make sure that when we fund programs, or we do new things, we do it in a way that we can have more confidence we're going to achieve the outcomes and the results we want to get. So the Social Investment Fund uh, is one tool we want to use, in particular to promote innovation uh, and new ways of doing things. We've committed that in every budget uh, we set, we will put uh, funding into that fund and we're hoping it will be very successful, uh, that therefore people may want to contribute themselves. And, and the contributions you're looking for then, for that fund from private individuals, what that would just be on a philanthropic basis, they'd give the money and then not expect anything back in return? Well there's two ways we want to work with people um, with, the, with the fund. The first is that we hope that the fund will be able to commission and contract work done outside of government, that is in the community by non-government organisations. Because we can see how successful some of those grassroots organisations are, whether it's Mike King's work, uh, where the mental health system isn't working, whether it's Julie Chapman's Kids Can Work. We want to leverage some of those um, community organisations that are very close to the families that need assistance uh, and, and work with them. The second part of it is we're hoping that if we uh, invest, let's say, in a smaller scale program that's shown to be very effective and we're looking to expand it, that others may wish to contribute to that expansion. We have in this country some incredible philanthropists and foundations who are working to change people's lives for the better. And if they want to give me their money to help New Zealand do that, then I think it would be foolish to say no. I mean, we've always heard that, that tale about the vulnerable family where you know five different agencies can roll up to their house in a day, you mm. know, different people from different agencies. Um, none of them really speaking to one another about how they can help that family. So. How's that going to change under your policy? Yeah, well, it is a real frustration um, that you can have all of these different government agencies dealing with a slice of the problem in someone's life, but not actually getting at the root causes. So what we want to do is, wherever possible, start to fund programs that actually give a bit more flexibility to look at those root causes rather than just be a box ticking exercise. Let me give you an example. Uh, let's take the people living in emergency housing right now, some of whom have been there for months. Wouldn't it be better that instead of at the moment, we put a lot of resources into those people, we're paying nightly motel bills for them. We, I imagine, have truancy officers visiting their homes because it's difficult for their children uh, to attend school. We have um, the police dealing with them. We have um, uh, work and income dealing with them. We have multiple government agencies in there spending money. Let's take an approach where we identify that group and say what is needed to get these people into sustainable housing uh, that they can maintain. Let's deal with the root cause of these issues. But how do you break down, though, the way government spending is done at the moment mm. with you know the different appropriations under the budget process? Mm. And in effect, well, you know, there's a bit of money going to that family from that agency and there's a bit of money going to that family from that agency when actually it would be probably better to pull it to, to, to have that sort of mm. overall effect. 
yes. yes, that that would have to probably cut across what is existing sort of public finance rules, wouldn't it? Well, not necessarily. Um, the, I think that you're, you're right to um, understand the size of the challenge. We don't underestimate the size of the challenge. Uh, but there have been programs to date that have dealt with this issue. So the Healthy Homes Initiative was an initiative that actually uh, ended up being about people in communities working to get houses insulated and heated but was funded by the Ministry of Health, who we normally associate with funding medicines and medical services. Um, The reason that was able to happen was because there was joint government agreement that that needed to be a priority. Similarly, with the better public service targets that were set by the past national government, what they required was an overall steering group which brought ministers together to work out how to achieve those targets outside of narrow departmental lines. So what we want to do is identify those areas where coordination is needed and break down those silos wherever possible. And what about total funding, and I, I remember speaking to, to Bill English, he was finance minister, about this when, it, when he introduced these sorts of initiatives. And, mm. I mean, he made the point actually that if he looked at a, a um, initiative or a program that would work, he'd be prepared to put more money into it. Mm-hmm. I mean, do, do you have a view about this as around trying to contain contain your spending or...? No, this is about trying to change people's lives for the better. You know, when I think about people in prison, I think all of us have that sense of the lost opportunity that person represents. We think about what are the things that if we'd done to support them earlier in their life might have kept them on the straight and narrow so that they were both better fulfilling their potential uh, but also not victimising other New Zealanders and then not costing the state huge amounts of money to keep them incarcerated uh, because they have become a threat to others. And if you can show me that there is an investment that if we had made that in the first 10 years or five years or three years of their life, they would be statistically far less likely to end up being an offender, then that is something that of course I want to invest in. When I make that investment, I want to do it carefully. I want to have evidence, I want to have data, I want to have a feedback loop. But if it's working, let me expand it, let me do more, let me scale it up. That's what social investment's about. In in the existing, for instance, MSD, presumably it will remain responsible for, I guess, paying out benefits for people for unemployment or work ready, um, what have you. Um, Or or would you look at taking some of those responsibilities away and and handing them on to other groups that might emerge as as a result of your sort of social investment fund? Well, MSD will remain in charge of the welfare system. There are huge opportunities to innovate within that welfare system to get more people into employment. Uh, Our social development spokesperson, Louise Upston, is someone I work very closely with. She is absolutely passionate about social investment because what she wants to see is that the resources of MSD are used more effectively. Uh, This year we uh, promoted our welfare that works policy and part of that is about devolving some responsibility away from uh, people uh, employed within the bureaucracy of MSD and down towards people in the community who can work more closely with young unemployed people to get them back into work. Uh, So you're seeing there that there are different ways we can approach problems even within departments using funds that are already there. when you say you bring these various agencies together, I mean, what are the agencies, apart from MSD, what are the crucial agencies that need to be involved? Well, that will depend on the issue we are trying to solve. So, um, you know, you can imagine uh, that justice, that p- the police, that education, that health, that welfare are all agencies that, tra- uh, Oranga Tamariki, are all agencies that are dealing with people Uh, whose lives aren't at their best, who could be fulfilling their potential better. They're dealing with disadvantaged people. They're dealing with people with complex needs, with multiple needs. Where we identify particular issues we are trying to solve, we should have those heads around the table. Um, I think the essence of social investment is to say, show us what works, show us with the data, and then let's do what's needed to scale that up. I suppose it comes back to uh, an issue that the Auditor General, John Ryan, has raised about not really often being clear about the outcomes of government Mm. spending. Is is that really the push here, that you're going to focus on outcomes 
rather than the old style of outputs? Yeah, that's exactly it, which is um, John has raised in several reports now his concern that government departments are very thorough about reporting what the money has been spent on and whether the outputs, you know, the number of visits by the um, social welfare agent, the number of forms that have been filled out, that's all accounted for. But we lose sight too often of what was the money invested for. And if the goal of that money was to actually make sure more children attended school, we should be looking at are more children attending school. And that should be what we measure the program by. So National will be far more results focused. We will set clear, measurable targets and we'll hold ourselves accountable for them. Because we can't keep tolerating failure. If a program's not working, we have to be prepared to stop it because the resources tied up in that program should be used as effectively as possible. Nicola Willis, thank you for your time.